I had my very first and the most terrifying night shift of my life as a registered nurse and I am here today to share it with you guys. Hello everyone, if you're new to my channel, you're welcome, you're returning, welcome back here on this YouTube channel, we discuss everything Finland and we also talk about other countries, how you can move to study or to work in these countries. If you don't already know, I am a registered nurse here in Finland, I studied nursing in Finland and I am working in Helsinki University Hospital, which is the number one hospital here in Finland. So in this hospital, I am specifically working in acute internal medicine ward, where you basically take in patients, they stay for a few days, and then they get discharged for continuous care in some other hospitals or some other wards. So, Mostly our patients stays like three to five working days or weekends, whatever, and they are out. So I am basically a morning nurse kind of person. We don't get so much money because all the additions comes when you do evenings, when you do night, odd hours, you get more money. But for my family's sake and for the sake of my son, I have decided to do it this way. Uh, sometimes money is important, but not as important as your child so that's why i have this agreement and arrangement ongoing so if you don't know already my sister came to finland in december 2023 it's the best gift i have ever received here in finland so i was so excited she was here with me all throughout the christmas we celebrated the christmas together before she moved down to the city where she's studying so i felt free my son was so excited to have his uh, bigger mother <laughs> you know be in the house so he was always with my sister they were doing everything together so i had free time to myself to probably pick extra shifts or do anything that i can do for myself or to get extra money since i am very 100 percent comfortable with the fact that my son is safe with my own sister who is like my bigger sister and she's like a mother to my son so and they are both in my house so it makes sense and then this particular day in december <laughs> there's this shortage of a night nurse in the department because we usually get this um a whatsapp group notifications from our colleagues we have a group whatsapp group at work where shifts when she shutters of staff comes they put it there and then of course if you're home wherever you are you get to know that there's a shortage in so and so shift if you want you say i'm interested i'm going to do it and you come do it and i was like hmm, it wouldn't pay it wouldn't be a bad thing of course i'm physically fit i can do as long shifts as i want but i wasn't doing it before because of my son now my son is with my sister so why not even if just for, with for the period she's with here with me so i was like hey i'm gonna do the night shift everybody was quiet because they knew i haven't done the night shift i'm very competent in my job i know what i got to do just that you know the times are different the difference between a night nurse an evening nurse and a morning nurse are quite different and the department are totally different have different employers present in these hours. So like say in the morning shifts in our department, we have like a uh, departmental doctor, assistant departmental doctor. We have like all the doctors filled up in the department. We usually have like five of them, four or five of them in the morning shifts. We have other nurses. We also have the departmental head nurse, which is like my boss also in the mornings so it's like even though you're there by yourself doing your work but you know you have these other people in the department who are going to of course jumping to assist you if you need any help unlike in the night in the night you are the only registered nurse usually with one other practical nurse okay so just the two of you and one or two doctors that are rotating the entire hospital during the night so it's a different thing you have more responsibility more ability to make decisions on do things that you should on a normal have a lot of people to consult even before you think of doing them so you're basically the boss in the night in your department this very night i chose by myself to go do this night shift so i went in there usually starts at maybe a few minutes to 9 p.m 
and we took in at that time this new patient that evening that was transferred from intensive care unit back to us because I felt like he was getting better. So if a patient is getting better and is in intensive ward, so they just like moves it over to our ward for like if they are maybe off the machines and they are okay, they are physically looks like they can manage in our ward because we are not intensive care. So this patient was just in that same evening transferred from that <laughs> that intensive care to our ward. So the evening nurse who was taking care of her already was already concerned about this, uh, this patient's uh, uh, health. Like he was, she was already concerned that this patient isn't looking good enough to be in our ward. He still looks like intensive care need kind of patients. So, but she, her work ended, she gave reports over to us. And uh, in our department, we have this two, um kind of um groups like patients we group patients into two groups so the other nurse takes care of this patient and the other nurse or the other um practical nurse takes care of the other patient so it's like a division of labor so this particular um patient let's just call him john so john was not actually in my list of patients so he was in the practical nurse my colleague, the practical nurse uh, worker, who was taking care of the other patients. So it was her patient, but I am the head nurse. So the, every medication, health situations like that kind of falls on me to make sure that everybody is at least okay. Now, the night was going, the patient started dropping in saturation, started dropping in blood pressure. We were following up. The practical nurse was very, very attentive, active, taking measurements, blood pressure, saturation. She was basically almost living in Mr. John's room. We have this doctor during these hours in the night that they call them like privacy lacari. That's like um, the doctors out of working hour doctors, you know, <laughs> doctors that work during non-working hours. So they usually are there for you to call in. They are usually in the hospital, but maybe in some other ward, checking out some other patients. So you have to call them if your own patient is going bad uh, or not feeling so well that you think he needs a doctor. So she called, the doctor said, okay, you know what? Um, do not do anything yet, that the, the values are not so bad at the moment. And the man has series of heart problems and other internal medical illnesses that he do not need to be resuscitated if he starts to die or he starts to pass away. Mind you guys, this man has no do not resuscitate decision yet. Like he is still very much available to be resuscitated if he starts to die. But the doctor, because of the heart of the man, the condition of the man, which is already bad as it can get, he said on the phone to this other carer that we shouldn't resuscitate, we shouldn't bother resuscitating this man if he goes south. Okay. But then the doctor did not write anything about this call or this statement or even put it down on the report system for us to you know make reference to if something happens to this man and why we did not reply or why we did not resuscitate him would be because the doctors had already told us which he already documented for us to see so now it he was like okay no problems and then we continued to you know Take care of the rest of the patients then the nurse assistant came again maybe around 12 1 or so that the patient was already going really really down the blood pressures were bad the saturation was almost dropping to 40 or even 30 something like i rushed into mr john's room i could see the man like sleeping away you know just quietly everything is dropping i had to call the doctor in that room at that time and then when i called the doctor it was 
uh, a different doctor from the one that he had she had spoken with earlier so the one first doctor was a guy and this one was a lady so the other doctor has gone to take a nap and handed over to this other doctor whom i spoke with so i was like look at my ward look at this patient this patient it's really going bad and he do not have uh do not reach a decision yet and we need to do something you need to come down here and check out this patient and she was like oh i have other patients that i'm checking out right now and i'll come after and i was like this man is dying like i just had to say it because i was looking at the man he was almost gone i said that i dropped the phone immediately i dropped that phone i was still in the patient's room every line started flattering out the saturations the blood pressure the 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 heartbeat everything started going on the machine beep 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 just like that in front of me with my assistant it was, oh my god i was like this only one night that i am doing for the first time in my entire life is the only night that this person wants to just come and you know die i was like what why did i take this shift like so on the spot, the man flattered out and then the the my colleague who looked at me and i looked at her and she was like telling me the doctor said that um this 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 that i shouldn't resuscitate but she he didn't write anything he didn't write anything what do we do what do we do we were like okay we don't have anything to show that this man should not be resuscitated according to our information system our information bank this man should be resuscitated if anything happens to him so i was like you know what I just cannot bank on that man's call, the, the, the doctors who is currently now asleep. And we can't call him again to reconfirm if we should or start. So we were like, in the minute, in the split seconds, we thought about this, weighed our options, and we pressed the resuscitation team button. And then I told her to go get the resuscitation thoroughly. And I started pressing. Just at the same second, I started pressing. And then the, 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 the sound for resuscitation started going across the doctors the station team saw it that came within three minutes or two minutes they're already in that room i was already pressing when they're coming and then my assistants were counting and pressing and counting resuscitation continuously giving medications the, the the doctors were already there everybody even the doctor that had some other patients that he was looking at that couldn't come down and everybody came down that night that second you know we kept on pressing and we exchange you press for 30 rounds i press 30 rounds and they give oxygen we were doing it i was like god 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 in my mind i was like literally asking god to please keep this man alive for just this one night that i said let me just take extra shift though because say i gave my sister that is like look after my son i wouldn't have been here look at me look at trouble and so many nurses have been doing night nurse for almost five years consecutively and they have not had to deal with resuscitation just that one night that i picked just that one night though i was praying i was praying and pressing and the reading starts coming up from the machines <laughs> The adrenaline that was the best it was the worst night of my life as a registered nurse but the reward i got when that man started beeping again on the on the machine when the life started coming back to that man when the saturation stopped started going it was like it was like calling someone from the dead like i don't know how to explain it you know it was just it was it was the most rewarding feel of my life. And then the doctor was like, do not press again. Do not press again. Do not press again. The man is like stable kind of. Now they moved the man. The doctor, uh, the anesthesia doctor and the rest of the doctors, the resuscitation team now said they are transferring the man from me back to the intensive care ward where he came from that evening, basically. And then he was reading the readings, the blood pressure was taking, it was coming back to normal. And they said, no more resuscitation. He's like stable kind of, so that they would now transfer him to that intensive ward, which is basically where all of them came from. So we opened the door. The man was still breathing gradually. The air additional uh, oxygen was given gradually. And then they transferred the man back to intensive care unit. My dear.
<laughs> that day, <laughs> I go as God may have it, other patients were fast asleep. Because the thing about this kind of situation is that when it happens, you have to prioritize. The rest of the patients were no more my priority. Neither were the other ladies' priority because we had the biggest priority of our life in our hand trying to keep this man, Mr. John, alive. So the essence of me sharing this today is that um, we have lives in our hands sometimes and we don't know how much that actually means in reality and sometimes some decisions that you have to make can be judged by lots of people or interpreted differently but the fact remains that we all are trying every single day to do the best that we know in our own capacity to better the lives of our patients. I want to hear your thoughts in what I did, what we decided to do to resuscitate this man, regardless the fact that the doctor who was now asleep at the time of the resuscitation said on the phone that we shouldn't bother resuscitating him if he goes south. Okay, I didn't have any things to prove. I wasn't even the one that the doctor called and I am the head nurse. What would I have done? Uh, some people could say you write down the, the, what you discuss with the doctor on the phone and that would be like a proof why you did not resuscitate this man when he started to die or at least when he died. So some people say they could have done that and they wouldn't have bothered to resuscitate well. I thought on my own side that one, I am not the one that the doctor spoke to directly and secondly, the doctor did not make any form of documentation about this said call for me to show tomorrow or not or if, if I'm called, why didn't why did I let this man die basically under my watch? So I took the, the best decision that I know I would have and I will still feel like that's still what I'm going to do. But I want to hear your thoughts on that. What would you have done if you were me? Would you have just based, uh, let the man uh, sleep away based on the fact that the other nurse or the other assistant nurse spoke with the doctor and the doctor was like, do not bother resuscitating him. He's already in bad condition. Would you have would have that have been enough for you to not do anything when this man died? Or would you have done what I did, which is like getting to resuscitate? Since the do not resuscitation, um, the decision was not there. The doctor said it was going to be done the next morning. So the next morning was the day they planned to do the re do not resuscitate decision. And the man started dying in the night before the next morning. So what would you have done in a situation like this? Let's hear your thoughts and your ideas on the comment section. But I think that's my very best and last night.